unless you can take the pain, you're never going to be able to participate in the game. And even after achieving financial freedom, there are still gains to be had. The question is, do you have the staying power? Do you know what it takes to build that staying power? Um, basically, what does it take to be a consistent, thoughtful investor? Let's ask Basan Maheshwari. Basan, let's assume you've achieved financial freedom the way that you have defined it. And that's a pretty good place to be. So you've got a corpus that is 50 times your average annual expense. And at this stage, can one just bark the money in a fixed deposit? And especially in a country like India, where, you know, we still have interest rates that aren't too bad. Yet I know in this situation also, you'll say, no, stay invested in the stock market. So explain why that advice is coming from you. So like, uh, nobody wants to leave a game which is winning. So people who've left the markets have left it because they've started losing. While you're winning, I mean, it might sound logical. What's the need to do more? What's the need? What's the requirement? What's the desire to actually keep making the same money when you have enough of it? At this stage, the passion keeps you in the business and the fear pushes you out of it. So there have been instances in my head. So one was 2008, the other was 2020, where uh, you ask yourself, is it worth it? Should you be doing so much of it that you risk yourself? But thankfully, sometimes you reach a stage where even if the Nifty falls 75%, your lifestyle wouldn't be hampered unless you are deeply leveraged. So instead of worrying about leaving the game, the first thing is to take course correction. A course correction would be if you've got a stock that's the leader of the previous bull market and it's falling 9 pins, don't try and catch it. Think of avoiding it. But broadly, the game keeps you within it. Whereas the money brought you in the game. And here I'm talking about the stock market. You know, retaining versus recovering. It's a tough one for most investors to really absorb and understand. So what are the principles that they should keep in mind? Because these are themes that we're touching upon one way or the other in all the conversations that we're having. Retaining is easy. Recovering is next to impossible. If you've lost something, don't think about recovering it. Think about doing what you would have done had you started with this smaller capital. Uh, my own experience, and I would like to share this because initially it was about recovering. So in the year 1999, I had this great portfolio of MNC drug companies, Pfizer and Hext Marion Russell, they were listed here. And during the mid part of 1999, I realized, the, I realized that the flavor is in software and technology. So Infosys was expensive. I went and bought Silverline and Penta Media and DSQ software. And there was this company called Shri Adhikari Brothers, mm. Sub TV. So Karishma Kapoor used to do the promo. Jab dekho, sab dekho. So they were doing programming, Shriman Shrimati, and then they started their own channel. So I bought a few hundred shares of Shri Adhikari Brothers at 130. The stock went to 2200. And then it started falling. Why it went up, I didn't know. I didn't buy ZTV because Z was expensive. Shri Adhikari Brothers was cheaper. I didn't buy Infosys because Infosys was expensive. Penta Media, Silverline and DSQ were cheaper. I didn't buy any, info info uh, any Infotech company, but I bought LNT because LNT had a subsidiary called LNT Infotech. Siemens had a subsidiary which was doing software or technology. So I thought, why not buy this? Never realizing that a backdoor entry to anywhere in life never works. You have to be there at the front. So as usual, I had started leveraging because I thought, let me put some more money to work. So we had shifted to Jammu by that time. And in those days, margin calls were never sent on emails and WhatsApp and messages. They arrived by telegram. So the telegram hit my Calcutta house and there was nobody to receive it. And uh, this was post the fall, when the market started falling. So DSQ, I bought it 320, went to 2800. So at 700, I got a margin call, when it's coming back from 2800. So I get a margin call, but it doesn't reach me because it's returned back from my house. And suddenly one day, 
I called the bank guy. I said, "Mera portfolio ka mujhe bhej dena." Because another key of my mind was, what if their hard disk crashed, and all my stocks were in electronic form, and they said we don't take a backup. What yeah. happened? What would happen after that? So I would say every once a month I would ask somebody in Calcutta to go and take a printout and get it stamped by the bank and say, "Do you guy, you own this stock?" Because always thought, if it's not a backup, then my share will go away. That's how you start in life. When you have, see, when you have little capital, you worry the most about it. Of course. So anybody who comes to me uh, and he's starting off, he will have more questions than somebody who's coming to you with two crores of capital. So coming back to that. The bank sold the shares off, and you know, your share to big guy. Your to credit balance account. I said, big guy, why? There was a margin call. You didn't quit. Then what I did was I bought the shares back. So the shares were sold at six hundred. It fell to four hundred. Went to eight hundred thereabouts because that's how stocks used to move in those Ketan Parikh days. Eight percent circuit up, eight percent circuit down. So I bought them back. thinking and then on my excel i would put dsq software 2800 rupees shri adhikari brothers 2200 rupees the peak price i said once or twice i'm going to get this price one or one in one or two years and this is how my portfolio is going to look and that was the money which i could afford to lose because that was a side business there was some other business where i was obviously struggling but uh, that never happened dsq finally went to zero Shri Adhikari Brothers. I don't know whether it's listed or it's still traded. That was also gone. Penta Media, Silver Line. Everybody knew what happened to those stocks. See, the classic thing about a bull market is, when a stock starts to rally, the bear market doesn't finish till the time that stock has come back to its original point. So, in the year 2008, there was these two reliance companies, R E P L and R P E L. So, in broking parlance, we used to say Elu Pilu. Then we used to say, जब तक ये इलू पीलू वापस बीस रुपया नहीं आएगा ना ये मार्केट रुकेगा नहीं. On its way down. On its way down. In the year 2018, when the mid cap started falling, and this is my own theory, GMR and GVK were the darlings of that market. The bear market didn't stop till the time GMR and GVK came back to the point from where they had started. And that's a cue that you are basically telling people to watch out for. You will wait for the bear market to end when the leading stock of that bear market, the Ghatia stock, not the best stock, the Ghatia stock comes back to the price from where it started. 2020 COVID times, all the NBFC space, the worst ones, they came back to hit ground zero, and that was when the, for example, the India Bulls, for example, for that matter, or maybe the DHFLs, those leading stocks, even a Bajaj Finance, for that matter, which we would have had in portfolios across it has to come back to hit the starting point which means that the bear market is nearing an end by itself now you have to get prepared for what's going to lead it from there on so in the year 1994 92 harshad mehta time tata steel and acc came back to the same point from where they started they were the bestest of companies but the worst of companies would have to come back to the same point from where they started because that tells you that nobody has been able to make money in a ghatia stock which means the bear market has ended long live the bulls of these type of companies i want to come at it from a slightly different angle uh, what's the biggest advantage that you know an equity holder has over the Entrepreneur, the promoter, the founder of a business. So my biggest advantage is if I'm an investor in Penta Media Graphics or a GMR or whatever, a GVK or uh, maybe a Yes Bank on its way down is the promoter can't get out, but I can. So at that time, that's such think, an obvious one. I mean, why didn't I think about it? <laughs> so so don't think of yourself as an owner's. partial owner of that big business where you can own a piece of that business no i'm not an owner at that moment i want to become a minority investor and move out so that's the biggest advantage which is not so much spoken about because if the stock has hit an air pocket and i know it's going to stay in that air pocket for the next several years or maybe the story is gone for good i still have the option of encashing But where does the owner sell it to? Whom does the owner sell it to? Does he sell it on the screen? There are no buyers at that time. 
So and it's a far more complicated process for him to sell, even if he manages that. If the whiff goes out, there are two hundred people waiting in queue to sell before him. You know, markets, if they are supposed to be discounting the future, automatically it implies that you know there are some people who know the cover beforehand. They're in the know. Uh, so I'm asking this on behalf of all of the amateur investors out there uh, who are constantly chasing tips. Like you yourself said, you know, when you were starting out, Bombay se khabar aata tha, and you know, it was the equivalent of a tip. Uh, so this is for those people who are chasing tips. Can you actually make a lifetime of earnings from tips? The lead time between the khabar and the ex actual execution is inversely proportional to the amount of money you will make out of the khabar. So if the khabar is after 15 days, this company is going to report that kind of earnings you don't know what's going to happen in those 15 days. The cover is not relevant. If the cover is that the earnings are going to come in the next two minutes and somebody has told me this is the cover, then probably I can. Because the variables increase with that. And covers may normally, you're not the first hand inf guy receiving the information. You'll probably the fifth or the sixth guy. So there are several people who are already in the money by the time the cover has hit you your cost price could be making somebody else a lifetime of earnings because he's bought a big chunk first and he's passed it on across so by the time you buy it you're already in a position to make him his lifetime of earnings mm -hmm. so i've seen several people in this game who have the cover but are not able to move their portfolio beyond a few lakhs unless you take the cover to the extreme end where it's illegal, immoral, unethical, you are dodging all the rules of the land and there are people who do that but then... Uh, again, but that's not you that's know, what not, we are yeah. interested in discussing yeah. either. But I like the fact that you've um, highlighted tip spelt backward is pit and so with tips beware pits. Yeah. You know in a sense I'm, I'm sort of broadly uh, summarizing what you said. You know, we all get it. We can all celebrate. We all know the joy of winning, right? No problem with it. But the pain of losing, uh, it's a tough one to overcome. And I want you to draw on your own experiences in the last 30 years. How do you overcome that pain uh, and continue on this equity journey? See, death gives you more grief than the joy birth would give you so if you look at the stock market it's the same because you've already had some more money if you make a little more it doesn't change your life but if you have only this much and if it goes away it changes your life it hits you so i think that's how it goes but then every time the markets have fallen and i have lost money at least on the screen the feeling internally has been that Initially, it was that it's gone for good. It's never going to come back. But nowadays, it's that one more re one recovery and we'll get it all back again. But the belief inside is this is the best way. Any other way is the second best. And you have to remain invested for 15 to 20 years in the market. If you're not invested for 15 to 20 years, you won't make money. And being invested doesn't mean being invested by selling in and out you have to be in the game because you don't come across too many people who've made money from the markets by coming in see you can take a exit correct or you can have an entry rarely would you find people who have the exits and the entries for so for example there is a 70s bollywood song andar se koi bahar na aa sake bahar se koi andar na ja sake hmm. so the market is like that if it's falling Who's in the market can't come out. And if you are on cash, and if it's rising, So that's the way to look at the market. It form because if you've taken one correct decision by staying on cash and the market has fallen, you would never know what is the point at which you take a complete U-turn in your mind and get back into the market. So I've seen this umpteen number of times in 2008, in 2020, in the mid-cap crash of the 2018 or 2017 and in the year 2000, people who encashed out could never get back in before it was too late and people who were in 
could never encash before it was too late. So that's the way it is. That's the moral of the story and I'm going to distill it and as always paraphrase it a little bit. But I'm always borrowing from The Thoughtful Investor, which is the book that Basant Maheshwari wrote, which I've read, read exhaustively, read a number of times. Investing is about making less and retaining more rather than making more and retaining less. That's a tongue twister. It's also fodder for thought. So chew on it. <laughs>